The Bucks started 30-13 with rookie head coach Adrian Griffin. Despite sitting second in the East at the time, a disconnect between the team personnel and coaching staff about defensive game planning was a lingering concern. Even after Griffin agreed to let the players take over in that respect, way back in Bucks training camp, an argument with assistant Terry Stotts influenced Terry to make a personal decision to leave the team. This gave the Bucks a bad start chemistry-wise with their new head coach. It was also reported that before being traded, Drew Holiday was next to Giannis and Middleton, involved in the interview process for the final four candidates for the Bucks' open head coaching job last summer. The Bucks then changed gears dramatically on the fly to trade someone they clearly viewed as a franchise staple in Holiday at one point, given he helped make the hiring of Adrian Griffin. After the trade for Dame is when the argument with Terry occurred, and given Terry was the new Bucks point guard's former head coach in Portland, this was the point where a behind-the-back internal bias against Griffin would tornado through the Bucks locker room. Eleven days after Stotts left the team following his argument with Griffin, the Bucks lost by 17 to Atlanta in the second game of the season to fall to 1-1. One one. Afterwards, Giannis would take the reins as man in charge himself, diagramming plays while yelling at his teammates beyond the command of Griffin. Theories arose that Griffin would take a stone-cold all-business approach by trying to part ways with Giannis's brother Thanasis in order to open up a roster spot to shore up the weaknesses which had already been leaked to the public. Despite maintaining one of the association's best records, all of this drama led to the shocking firing of Griff on January 23rd and the hiring two days later of an all-time playoff choker as a man in charge, Doc Rivers, who was just fired by Philadelphia last spring. The Bucks have straight up flatlined ever since, having gone what's tied for an NBA third worst over their past 10 games, 3 and 7, having lost to the bottom feeding Utah Jazz, Portland Trailblazers, and Memphis Grizzlies over this span. Milwaukee's front office has messed up, as it seems there's zero genuine Bucks given here. There's been plenty of insane quotes from Rivers that you know if you've been following this situation, but to sum things up for us, the difference in what former coach Adrian Griffin said in comparison to Doc Rivers in their respective first few moments as Milwaukee Bucks head coach tells us everything we need to know. Griffin would state last fall, I would say I'm so optimistic almost to a fault, but I don't look at it like what if we fail, I look at it like what if we succeed. Conversely, Doc Rivers stated upon his arrival in Wisconsin that his new job that's going to pay him $10 million annually potentially for the next three years was quote-unquote, something he wouldn't wish on anyone. But as bad as Rivers has been, and it's been bad in about every aspect so far, and it's been one of the biggest headlines across the NBA universe, but the Bucks' chemistry being officially broken can be blamed on the man who hired Doc, the twisted, roller coaster minded John Horney Horst. Horst thought it was a good call to give roster spots simultaneously to both Giannis Dettacumpo's brother and Brooke Lopez's brother before awkwardly cutting one of them. Thankfully, the GOAT Robin Lopez would, with brotherly love, be there to support Brooke even after being cut, while at the same time showing his disgust towards John Horst for cutting him by delving into a novel like he was waiting for the bus. He's going to be waved, and now he's just, he's not even watching the game. Then you had JJ Redick taking shots at his former coach saying there's no accountability with Doc regarding the victim mentality from this man Rivers from the jump after taking the Bucks' job. Doc's son and former player for him as well in now ESPN's Austin Rivers would clap back at JJ by implying his dad was responsible for Redick's career success while saying Doc took accountability for blowing a 3-1 series lead in the bubble by getting fired. Going back to Milwaukee as an organization, and it was simply bad Bucks management to have let Drew Holiday be involved with the decision about the head coach for your team before swiftly dealing Drew away to Portland out of the blue. Cutthroat actions towards a top contributor to the 2021 title run. This whole season leading back to last summer from John Horst is completely sketchy, considering not only the fact that Adrian Griffin was doing a decent job and had many ties around the league as a former veteran player as well as veteran assistant on an at one point contending Toronto team, but that Horst had a personal friendship with Adrian, which included weirdly naming his pet dog after Griffin. Apparently John's dog Griff wasn't a good boy, because black and white thinking is one of the only theories behind the firing of a great person being Griffin. Before Griffin's firing, I would defend the former assistant coach for my Raptors when Bucks fans were being unnecessarily hard on him instead of appreciating a Dame Time buzzer-beating game winner for the ages. 
But I'm not going to blame this on Bucks fans because it goes without saying, as fans, we have the free speech right to be as picky as we want to be on social media. To be fair, 30 and 13 was a trending topic directly after Griffin's firing. Bucks president of basketball operations John Horst is the man to blame here for all of signing a highly questionable later round playoff head coach in Rivers for $10 million a year through 2027, destroying the trust between Giannis and Brooke with nasty brother tactics, letting players he's about to trade away help make the decision for who he wants to be head coach, building up a personal relationship with a rookie head coach in Griffin who goes on to win 70% of his first 40 games, and then firing him out of nowhere Randy Orton style. It is slimy, gutless, but most of all in terms of what's genuinely relevant in the age of capitalism from a business and management perspective, it's terrible management. You get what you deserve in this league, and like in any walk of life, decisions have consequences, and what goes around comes around. Griff was a stellar man in charge, unnatural for that matter. Wouldn't be surprised if my Raptors pick up Adrian as an assistant to form a deadly one-two punch with he and Darko, plus to give Ryakovich internal competition. For Milwaukee fans, I guess this is a lesson for them and in turn all Hoop fans that management is everything in this league. Even after a stellar start record-wise through 43 games, albeit with problems defensively that left their potential tremendous if they fixed them. Unfortunately, the front office making a Kanye-esque how-could-you-be-so-heartless-esque decision to fire their head coach out of nowhere could bury the Bucks to the bottom of the playoff picture after hiring someone who doesn't even seem like they have a bit of interest in being the man in charge. Milwaukee's 23-24 downfall could very well be the slice of karma John Horny Horst is about to be served. The Bucks came off as a bunch of trolls by celebrating the game after Adrian Griffin was fired in the pregame warmups, and at All-Star Weekend, Giannis stated he was a victim of having different coaches, acting like fans aren't privy to the fact that he has a major say in the decision of management. Don't forget, Giannis next to Drew and Chris were reported to have interviewed Adrian Griffin before his hiring. For new head coach Doc Rivers, the poor old man seems confused as to why he's even there in the first place, and given my games with Doris are on mute regardless, send this man back to ESPN play-by-play. -play. Personally, I, you know, I, I'll be honest, I, I told our owners uh, when they called, I said, I think you, I don't understand why you're doing this, you know, um, and they said- With all due respect, the lack of appreciation from Doc after getting another coaching job goes to show you this man should have retired a long time ago. Griffin was primed and ready to actually coach, and it's sad the man who named his dog after him was blatantly unaware of that fact. 30 and 13 versus 3 and 7 speaks volumes, the statements from Doc and Adrian upon arrival speaks volumes, and this Milwaukee mess has them officially cooked. A massive shame given this was Dame's first chance in years at a championship. But what are your thoughts on this NBA docudrama? Best answer gets next video shout out. Today's winners are on your screen. Appreciate every take down below and any bit of support for my channel. This was Deep Flow, and I'll see you next video.